In our previous video, we talked about Taiga's Atlas, which is their electric-powered trail performance snowmobile model. This unit was more than a little impressive, but Taiga understands that the Atlas is targeted at a very specific group of buyers, which is why they offer a second flatland snowmobile model, the Nomad, which is targeted at a much broader range of users. In other words, they get that enthusiasts are going to expect a snowmobile that's electric, not an electric snowmobile. So I think the first thing we have to figure out is, what is a Nomad? What, what is that sled? What is it made of? Who is it for? Well, the Nomad appears to me to be a hybrid of a utility snowmobile and a two-up snowmobile. It has a very long track, 154 inches, but it has a really good two-up seat, which kind of runs counter to what we think of. We would think of 154 being a mountain sled, but I think its real life is going to be carrying passengers and pulling loads and doing utility work, ski hill maintenance, that sort of thing. Then of course there's rental operations. I'm thinking places like Yellowstone, Montana, where rental operators who use snowmobiles traveling into the park, those vehicles are very restricted. Places like that are very concerned about emissions, obviously, but noise as well. And uh, the Taiga Nomad would be perfect for that type of scenario. Then then finally, the last group I would say is people like farmers, trappers, property owners, people like that. I mean, you've got a large cargo rack, trailer hitch built in, uh, no noise to startle animals if, if you're on a farm or if you're a trapper or a hunter. So I really think that this vehicle fits into these niche markets really well and answers a lot of questions nobody else does. Based on the expected 140 kilometer range of the Nomad, that's not an issue in any of these usage scenarios. It's gonna work perfect. What were your first impressions of the Nomad when you started walking around, looking at it, sort of experiencing all that it is? This is a quality piece. The finish quality, the way the thing looks, even its style. If it looked geeky, you'd immediately turn it off in your mind. It doesn't look at all geeky. It looks really, really sharp and well balanced. Honestly, my expectations were very far exceeded after riding it. As soon as I pulled the throttle, everything changed in my mind, everything changed. Immediately, it was like, this is a quality looking piece. It looks like a snowmobile, it feels like a snowmobile to sit on. And as soon as you start riding it, it feels like a snowmobile to ride. It handles good, it rides pretty good, it's comfortable to sit on. And immediately I realized this is a legitimate snowmobile. There's a lot of technology going on in this vehicle. There's a lot of mechanics. What were some things that really stood out to you? Well, my nickname is Motorhead. So I was immediately thinking about what was under the hood and of course, uh, we know that we're not allowed to look under there right now because there's a lot of proprietary top secret stuff. But the important thing is I didn't need to look under there to discern and feel and experience uh, low NVH, real seamless integration of the power, the way the power came through your finger into the throttle, then into the track and moving the vehicle forward. There was a feeling of overall refinement that quite frankly, I wasn't expecting. So like the Atlas, the Nomad comes in multiple configurations, let's call it. Uh, they're all Nomads, they're all 154s, but you can get them in two different power outputs, let's say. You can get a 90 horsepower model or you can get the 120. There is no 180 horsepower model in the Nomad. But within each of those horsepower classifications, for example, the 90, you get two modes. So you get Eco and Normal, but you do not get Sport. Once you move up to the 120 horsepower Nomad, you get Eco, Normal, and Sport. There's also multiple battery options as with the Atlas. So you've got a regular capacity and a high capacity battery. On first riding it, first starting it, getting familiar with the controls, it all made sense. Handlebar switch gear was completely familiar to me. I wasn't in, you know, Planet of the Apes or something. It was, it was a real setup that I understood and it worked right, it made sense. When you applied throttle, you got a proportionate amount of, of response from the vehicle. I, I think it's also worth commenting on that, that the response is like, whoa. It's very, very unusually strong for a two-up uh, touring utility sled. So the way that the company has designed the on-off button, the kill button, uh, so that you can look at the uh, screen and tell whether you're gonna be going forward or reverse, it made sense to me. How it performed and felt on the trail was the most shocking to me, and, and there's a reason for that. So the question I asked myself, if you were to put a gas engine in this vehicle, would it be as much fun? The answer is yes. If you put a gas motor under the hood, I'd be perfectly happy with that snowmobile 
compared to other gas sleds. But how it handled on the trail was the biggest one for me. It, you gotta remember, Tyga designed this snowmobile from the ground up. It's not somebody else's front suspension. It's not somebody else's skid frame. It's theirs. It's not somebody else's chassis. It's theirs. Ergonomics, they designed all that. And when I get on it, ergonomically, it's darn near perfect. It feels amazing to sit on. Going around a corner, it handles flat. It's predictable. It bites hard in the corners. It, it feels great to ride as just being a snowmobile. It is eerie quiet. The, the noisiest thing on, a, on the, the times we trail rode at speed was the wind going through my ears. That was the loudest thing I heard. Throttle modulation is another thing. You can, you can feather the throttle. It's, it's actually ridiculous. You can make it move one inch at a time. Now you can do that with a gas powered snowmobile, but you do it for too long and you're gonna burn the belt. Also, maybe not in terms of performance it does better, but from an overall user experience, uh, snowmobiles require maintenance, they do. And, and you know, four strokes, two strokes, people like to argue which requires more, but this one doesn't. Other than tightening the track, there's really nothing else that you have to do to the snowmobile. You just, you just plug it in and charge it. So at the end of the season, you don't have to winterize it. You don't have to make sure you put stable in the gas. You don't have to do anything. You just basically put it in the garage and push the off button, right? And then next year, you just push the on button and take it out. So I think that that's something that is, realistically, that is better than a traditional snowmobile. How does this thing fit into the current snowmobile marketplace? Isn't that the question though? Where does this fit? It does have a few limitations, but the things that it can do put it in a very unique spot in our marketplace. So all of a sudden you've got this snowmobile that is super functional and easy to use, requires zero knowledge to use it, doesn't make a mess, doesn't require you to buy anything else, no gas, no oil, no extra stuff that you have to have, just you, your gear, and your sled. This is a vehicle that appeals to people who are either intimidated or just don't want the hassles of riding a standard snowmobile. All of a sudden, those people can go, hey, let's buy this sled, we'll park it at our cottage. When we wanna go for a little tour around the lake or go up the trail and back or go exploring, you know, off trail on the hydro lines, we just push the on button and we go, this is great. We know that a lot of people who are putting money down on these things already are people who've never owned a snowmobile before. So, Tyga comes along with an idea that wasn't focused on that in the first place and they have captured that marketplace without even really trying. And I think that is probably the main place that it fits in. But that's not to discount the fact that you or I would have a great time with it too. We got the best jobs in the world. We ride snowmobiles for a living. And so because we do that, we have a tremendous frame of reference. I had low expectations for this vehicle. I did because there's so much that's new. I mean, we've seen a lot of crazy weird stuff come and go, but this is not crazy weird stuff. This is the real deal. There's immediately an impression of quality, immediately an impression of integration of the power and the chassis and all the components. The thing definitely changed my impression and my impressions uh, usually are pretty strong right from the beginning. And on this one, I just gotta say, this thing won me over and I quite frankly, I'm still shocked. Be sure to follow the links below to our coverage of Tyga's Atlas Trail Performance Model.